Republican Senator, former U.S. Trade Representative Rob Portman, who a little more than a couple of days ago had warned about the dangers of tariffs and how they can get out of control, saying that it will hurt the economy, jobs, and wages unless they are avoided. Uh, Senator, very good to have you. Neil, thanks for having me on. Thank you, sir. Um, on this uh, impasse, still, uh, the tariffs look at the very least that they'll go into effect on June 1, both with uh, China with $60 billion worth of our goods over there uh, and better than $200 billion, now $250 billion with the Chinese goods over here. Are you worried? Well, of course I am because you don't want to have a tariff escalation. It hurts everybody. On the other hand, you got to use tariffs as leverage to get China to stay at the table and make the agreement because the agreement's important. You know, I've talked about this before. There's no question that China is not playing by the rules and they've got to change their behavior both in terms of taking our technology but also in terms of the subsidies they do, including state-owned enterprises. So these are structural changes. And then you've got to deal with the imbalance in trade. You know, we've got the biggest trade deficit in the world with China right now. So but, but, I think but the tariffs... But has your stance changed, Senator? I mean, when you were working with President Bush and negotiating with the Chinese, did, was there a sort of a, a, a battle? You, you tariff us, we'll tariff you. I mean, this is significantly at the end. And to your point, it might work. But has the strategy changed? Is it a sign that you and maybe fellow Republicans are open to this because you think this will be a winning strategy? Yeah, I, I do think there's some of that. I think there's a, a recalibration a little bit on using tariffs as a as a technique, you know, as a as a short term uh, objective to get them to the table and to make the right decisions in terms of these longer term problems. But it's not an end in of itself. You know, we, we shouldn't want tariffs to be the result of this. The result of this should be an agreement and take the tariffs off. The other thing that happened today, Neil, you mentioned earlier, was the president chose to delay for six months a decision on whether to put additional tariffs under Section 232, which is under national security, in this case under for automobiles, a 25 percent tariff. Many of us had expressed concern about that. I had opposed that specifically because it's going to raise the cost of cars dramatically for the people in Ohio and around the country and hurt our economy. So I'm pleased the president did that. I think that's one reason you see the market responding favorably. I would like to have seen that, you know, taken off the table altogether because I think it's a bad idea. But in terms of China, I feel differently because there we're not talking about our allies. We're talking about a country uh, that is taking advantage of us and, frankly, the rest of the world. And most so of the rest do, of the world though, agrees with us. Are Americans braced for the possibility? And it might be short lived to your point, sir, that uh, this drags on a while uh, and they're going to face a, a lot higher prices for a lot more goods. Now, the president says that they can find alternatives, American alternatives. Maybe it will prompt more companies to do the kind of thing that uh, uh, companies like GoPro are doing and shift uh, factory operations to other locales besides China. But in the meantime, I think a lot of Americans are not prepared for the price hikes to come. Should the president be preparing that? Well, there are price hikes to come. And, and Larry Kudlow was right in his comments, of course, that, you know, part of this is borne by consumers. Uh, the reality is that the additional tariffs that might be put on in another tranche, as they call it, in other words, there's additional increases in tariffs being prepared right now will be on more consumer goods. So think about electronics or toys from China or whatever you buy in Target and Walmart practically. So that's that's going to be more directly impacting consumers than the existing tariffs, which are more uh, business oriented. In other words, uh, things like manufactured products, uh, uh, inputs into companies here in Ohio uh, that talk to me about it, but I don't hear it from as many constituents or consumers. On the ag side, the issue is that China is buying less. So they're not just putting tariffs on our stuff, which they're now starting to do, but they're just buying a whole lot less, including soybeans from Ohio. Uh, and so from the ag community, there's an increasing concern too. But look, I think on China, we've got to hang tough for now. All I right. think we've got to give the president, the, the, president the, the flexibility he needs to try to keep the pressure on. It's a short-term tactic. It's not the solution here. In the end, you want an agreement. And the agreement is, lowering tariffs on both sides and getting rid of some of these so-called non-tariff barriers to having fair trade between the United States and China. And you do. You hope it's short-lived. Senator, thank you very, very much. I appreciate it. Thanks, Neil. Good to be on with you. All right. A lot more.